Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Blended Thoughts. I'm Jacenia. And I'm Valeria. Thanks for joining us and actually thanks to everyone who's been listening and watching and giving us feedback. We really appreciate it. Today we want to talk about something that I actually have a passion for which is personal finance mm -hmm. um, and our mistakes. Exactly, like how being an immigrant and how having sometimes our parents that were new to the country uh, we didn't learn certain things about finances that mm -hmm. later affected us. Yeah. But then, you know, we learned and then we tried to fix them. <laughs> yes. And hopefully you guys can learn from our mistakes um, as well as from some of our successes. Um, so, I mean, there's so many things to cover. I know. But one of the main things that Valeria and I were talking about today are 401ks. And yes. The mistakes that we did. What was the mistake you made? So, I was, when I started working, I... I don't think I've ever heard about what a 401k was. Uh -huh. So I didn't really see the importance of, of it or having one. And the reason when I started working, I decided not to have one. Uh -huh. And I think that was a big mistake because I didn't want to have a money ticket out of my paycheck because I wanted that money at that moment. And I was like, I can't afford for... Uh, people taking more money out of my paycheck, you know? I'm already paying for like social security and all those taxes and it's like one more, ah, no thank you. Yeah. So I didn't and now I do regret it because I see how important it is and to have And how much money one. you lost. Exactly. Yeah. Um, for me, I when I worked for Disney, you had to be there for a year for it to, to be vested. Mm -hmm. And vested meaning for them to start contributing. So for those of you that don't know, uh, a 401k is a program that some employers, usually larger employees, offer where it is a contribution to a retirement savings account mm -hmm. where you put money in and then the company matches X amount. Sometimes they do a dollar for dollar. So if you put in a dollar, they give you a dollar. So then you have two dollars. Sometimes they do. Right. If you put in a dollar, they give you 50 cents. And then this is invested in... You get to choose how it's invested, but into stocks and funds and a bunch of different mm -hmm. things that you don't have to manage. There's a company that does that yeah. for you, unless you want to be more involved. So basically, and it's it's tax um, deferred, so you don't pay taxes on it. It's pre-tax. Oh, until you, you take it out. Yeah, you pay taxes. <laughs> you always pay taxes. But when I started at Disney, I right away rolled, uh, enrolled, and I was 23 when I started working for Disney, mm. which was great. And then when I left Disney and I started Ronstadt, again, it's like such ignorance that I could kick myself. <laughs> that, <laughs> But hopefully you yeah. won't make the same mistakes I know. Learn, if you're listening. Learn. So I already had a 401k with Disney and I was like, okay, like I guess I have to roll it into mm -hmm. the new 401k with Ronstadt. And I called and it was such a lengthy process, like all this paperwork that I had to provide and I was like, ah, forget it. I'll do it later. Well, later turned into three years, which is really stupid. Yeah. Because um, I just, I'm like, oh, so much paperwork to roll it in. And then I called one day and they're like, you can just start a new 401k with us and still have your Disney one. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah. So I did after three years, but that's three years worth of money that I lost. And like you, for those people that are like, oh, I can't afford right now to have that money taken out. It's so minimal. Yes. That you don't even see it. Like you don't even realize that you can definitely survive without it. But over the the length of time, it makes you so much money. Yes. And that's the mistake. The most important thing is time, time. with a 401k. Mm -hmm. The longer you have it, the younger you start it, the more money you make. Exactly. And I was just uh, not very sure about doing it because... I've always been, I was always used to saving in a savings account and investing and knowing that, you know, the risk of, yeah. you know, the market going bad. And I was like, I don't want to lose money. Mm -hmm. But then it is important because it makes your money grow a lot faster. And yep. it's something that you want to have for your retirement. And, yep. you know, like I remember Mike mentioning this, like before people used to get Mon like after you retired, people used to get paid pension, plans. a pension, mm -hmm. and now that's something that people don't yeah. have. So you really need to fund your own retirement. retirement. And if you don't do it, yeah. Well, it's funny because I was talking to Jose about this. Disney did pension plans, mm. and they st they stopped doing pension plans December thirty first, 
and I started with them January 3rd. Oh, wow. So because of three days, I missed their pension oh, plan. Oh, my gosh. I know. And, and they didn't, like... No, because, wow. it, it, you know, it, it was done, so they did 401k, which is fine. Mm -hmm. But, and, like, one thing, when the market goes down and the economy is doing bad, a lot of people are like, oh, let me pull my money out. Just don't. Yeah. That money doesn't exist. Out of sight, out of mind. I even, like, looked at it. I was like, oh, my God, I've lost so much money. But it's like, just stop. Just forget about it, because yeah. then the other day I logged back in, and, like, it went back up. So you literally have to forget it. Yes. So, it's something that you're going to build over yes. time. The longer you have it, the better. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, I would feel more scared if I was, like, about to retire, and the market crashes, and I then know. you lose money, because... Yeah. Um, yeah. I've heard that happening. Time. Exactly. And yeah, then you don't have time it. to like rebuild it. Yeah. So. so if you don't have a 401k and your company offers it, please stop being stupid. Literally, you're being stupid. Yes. Uh, <laughs> you're going to regret it. <laughs> and you think like, oh, yeah, no, that's money out of each paycheck. It's not going to make a difference. I yeah. promise you, you can survive without it. But it's going to make such a difference long term. Mm -hmm. um, so if you have a 401k, don't be stupid like us and wait <laughs> years to sign up and lose. Like that, those three years long term could be hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yes. Although they were probably like a few thousand of our dollars taken out. Like mm -hmm. that's how it works. Um, yeah. It can work if things go yeah. well. So, but, yeah. yeah, I mean, 401k, like I said, my mom didn't have one. She had no idea. I've never heard of it before mm -hmm. I started working. When I was, like, uh, asked if I wanted to enroll, I was like, oh, what is this about, you know? Yeah. So I had to read about it, whatever. But one thing that I did do uh, since I started working and since, you know, it was having a savings account. Mm -hmm. I already shared why, you know, um, I like to save and I like to be careful with my spendings. But... I think that's something that we also need to consider having. Yes, I agree. Um, I've always been pretty good with money, and I think I have been because of, I, I saw so many struggles and mistakes mm -hmm. that my parents made. I actually had to go through with them because yeah. of the language as we've discussed. And I didn't, you either go two ways. You repeat the same pattern as your parents or you learn from it. And right. I wanted to learn from it. Um, and one thing that you and I both did, which actually we just found out as we were sitting talking about this, we did two things the same. We both bought our cars cash. Yes. So I bought my car cash. It was $8,000. How old was I? I was maybe like 21, 22, which is, that's a lot of money, but I... I always was, like, smart saving my money. And I mm -hmm. went to school full-time, college full-time, and I worked full-time. Mm -hmm. um, and I never had a car payment, actually, until this year. Yeah. Why did you buy yeah, a car same cash? Thing. And how did you do it? I mean, I've always been, like, afraid of debt. Yeah. I don't want to own money to anybody. Right. So since I started working, I started saving most of the money that I was making. Uh, luckily, back then, I didn't have to pay major bills, like rent yeah. and... Too, How, so that was very yeah. helpful and I was not spending stuff, my money on things that I didn't need. So that really helped me because I had to buy my car because the car that I had before, uh, my brother's dad took it back. Oh. So I was like, all right, so okay. I need a car because I need to go to work yeah. and I need to go to school. So luckily I had savings and I made a point of buying a car that I could afford i didn't want to go into monthly payments mm -hmm. because then you also have to pay for the car insurance and it adds up oh yeah so I know. yeah save a lot of money too i i do have to say um another thing that we both did that i just found out is so i graduated from the university of tampa which is a not a cheap school <laughs> no. it's very expensive but something that i didn't necessarily do it on purpose it was a byproduct of being an immigrant and not knowing, which worked in my favor. I went to HCC for a year and a yes. half. I didn't go for two years. I didn't get my associate's degree there. Mm -hmm. So the reason I went there was because when I was high school, I was clueless. I was lost. Yeah. I didn't know that, wait, what? People are doing college tours? What is that? I have no yeah. idea. Same with me. I, I had I no was idea. I college. I was like, after high school, you go to college. Not going to college was not an option, which ugh, mm -hmm. I don't agree with anymore, <laughs> but... I went to HCC because I, I 
didn't have another plan. I just knew I wanted to go to college. But it helped me because I was there for a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And I took my general education courses at literally, <sighs> like, a tenth of the cost. Yes. Than it Which is cost me dumb, but that's yeah. another topic. A, that, <laughs> that's another business that hurts <laughs> us, but whatever. Um, so I, I paid a year at HCC, I think about $6,000. Three thousand dollars a semester, going full time, mm -hmm. um, and I paid that cash. I remember I had a box of cash underneath my parents' bed, and every time I had to sign up for classes, um, I would literally take my money out, write a check to the school. Mm -hmm. I didn't get financial aid. Wow, because I was an only child. Like they thought my parents could afford to pay for my college. Not true. Wow, yeah, no. same with me. Like uh, my plan after high school was to go back to Mexico and go oh. to college there. And then I went to Mexico, and I saw some things that I didn't like, and I was like, uh, let me, <laughs> I'll just go back. And it was kind of last, last minute. Oh. So one of my friends was the one that told me, okay, like, you still have time to enroll in a community college. So that's why I went to a community college first. And I'm thankful for it because yeah. it saved it a lot a of money. It was a byproduct yeah. of us not knowing, but it actually yeah. worked out. Like, now, I don't even know how I registered. I don't know how I got my loans. But, you know, it I was, was able to work. get it done. I do uh, had, like, a mentor. He was very helpful with all the processes. And he told me to which scholarships to apply to, oh, like, buy my How'd books. You, find this you know, he, he was a dean of students. At okay. the at the college, so I went and talked to him because I was like, like how you know, though? like how did you even get to him? Like what? How did that? I don't start? even remember. I just remember going to his college and explaining the situation. And since then, we became close. And he told me, okay, like you gotta play to this, and oh, then you gotta really do nice. that. And it was very helpful. So I remember find somebody like that. To yeah. Help you. And it was also because of him that I went to my graduation ceremony because I was like, oh, I don't want to do it. But he like actually like Aww. pushed me to do it. And, and now I'm glad I... No, I haven't talked to him in a while. You should find but him. Yes. You should send him a thank you yes. card. I, hopefully he's still there so I can reach out. You should. Yeah. Yeah, no, I I remember filling out FAFSA. It was a nightmare. Yeah. And I had to do it because my parents didn't know it, even mm -hmm. though your parents are supposed to do it. But... So I paid like six thousand dollars or so a year there, I think. Mm -hmm. And then I here's the trick, because most people are like, oh yeah, but if they see if some employers see that you went to a community college, there's there's no way of knowing this way. Mm -hmm. I didn't get my associate's degree because if you get an associate's degree, an employer is gonna know you first went to a community college, right. which isn't. I'm not saying that's bad. But some employers question why you didn't right away go to a four-year university, mm -hmm. from what I've seen. So, at the year and a half mark, I was like, I want to go to UT. I want to go to UT. And I don't know why I got in my head. I applied. I made appointments with as many people there, like transfer counselors. And she mm -hmm. was like, you can do this. And UT is a private college. It was $30,000 a year. Wow. Yeah. So, like, that's a huge difference. And then I got two, I got two scholarships. I got one scholarship for going to a private university. You get that from the state, it was like $1,000. Okay. And then I got another one for transferring with good grades, which I think was like $4,000 mm -hmm. a year, which is still like $30,000. Yeah. That's nothing. But thankfully, I continued to work full time. I continued um, to go to school full time and all of my paychecks. Like, I I had to get loans. Yeah. Because <laughs> yes, it's impossible to I pay out of pocket. Afford. Yeah. And I studied abroad. Yeah. I studied in Paris a summer, and that was on a loan, too. But I was always smart and mm -hmm. made payments. And I'm so happy that I was able to pay all my student loan debt within three and a half years of graduating, which is a big deal. Yeah. It's like a little bit out of the topic, but like now you said that you studied abroad. Uh -huh. I was not even aware that that was a, an option. Uh -huh. You know, I used to go to school and leave <laughs> and go to work. Well, you know? but I, I didn't find out in school, like in college. Um, when I was 15, mm -hmm. I think it was 15, my freshman year of high school, I started taking French. I don't know why, but I did. Mm. And my high school class, French class, was taking a trip to Paris. Oh, okay. And I was like, oh, I really want to go, but my parents are never going to let me go to Paris by myself with mm -hmm. 
I don't know how they said yes. <laughs> I have no idea to this day. It was meant to be. And then I went when I was 15 with my high school uh, freshman oh, French class. Okay. And that's when I was like, I have to live here. Uh-huh. So that's when I was like, I have to live here somehow in the future. And then ever since then, in my head, it was like, when I'm in college, mm. then I'll study abroad. So it wasn't through the university. I find out I already oh, okay. knew I wanted to. Okay. So, like, take as many opportunities as you can yeah. in high school because yeah. it changes you. But- yeah. I mean, going to community college was a huge savings. And all the loans available, take advantage of those because well, scholarships. anything helps. Yes. Yeah. Um, don't, though, don't take too many loans. Yeah, because you always have to pay back. <laughs> yeah, because there's and the some, interest rates and all that. Stuff. The interest rates on student loans are worse than cars and houses. Yeah, I please somebody explain that to me because that doesn't make any sense. But whatever. Yeah. Um. You were mentioning something. Okay. Oh, I know some people that have taken out student loans and buy Louboutins. Mm. They pay their car with it. They go on trips with it. Like, that's not free money. You wow. have to pay that back. Don't be stupid. <laughs> like, it's... And it's... You're not paying back what you got. You're paying back even more. Yeah. But how I was able to pay my student loans was Airbnb. So, some of you might know that I have um, a couple Airbnbs. Mm-hmm. And first, I started with the house... My house that I live in. The one that we're in right now. Um... I had thought about it before, but it's kind of scary. And I was like, oh, maybe, a, like, a room. But then I didn't want to be at the house with right. like other people here. Yeah. And a friend of mine, a coworker of mine, Elizabeth, when I worked at Ronstadt, she started doing it at, um, she has, like, a mother-in-law suite above her okay. garage. And she started doing it. And I was like, let me just post my house. Just, like, I don't know. I just was curious. Just to see. Uh-huh. And in two hours, I got, like, six requests. And I was like, oh. Wow. And ever, I've been doing it for like three, four years now. You mm-hmm. did Airbnb. I did. I Why? did. Uh, once I moved with Mike, my lease was still active. So, and I didn't want to cancel early. Right. So I was like, all right, let me try this Airbnb. And it was like an extra income that I had. Did it pay for the apartment? Yeah. And more? Yeah. How was yeah. your experience? It was it was interesting. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's a lot of work, you know. After somebody easy. leaves and you gotta clean and then do laundry and then it's it's and they work. Damage stuff. Yes. And then they oh yeah, they stained stuff. the carpet and I had to like complain and when I complained, nothing got fixed, <laughs> so I had to clean it. Yeah, yeah th- people, when they find out I do Airbnb, they're like, oh my god, if I want to do that, it's easy money. I'm like, it's no. not easy money. Like, it's work. It yeah. takes work, but it's worth it for me. So every single Airbnb payment that I received, I sent to my student loan. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, and I will say, I would see this money and be like, oh, I could do so much. I could travel. I could buy so much stuff. But I'm like, nope. Yeah. Go straight to there. Yeah. And, uh, and I had seven student loans. Mm-hmm. So for my student loans, um, I use the snowball effect. Do you know what that no. is? Dave Ramsey talks about it a lot. So the snowball effect can work for any loans, not student loans. So basically, let's say you have 10 loans. Most people, if they, they're paying towards their principal to try to pay them off sooner, mm-hmm. they'll let's say they're paying an extra $100. They'll so be like, 10 here to this one, 20 to this one, 30 to this one. That's never going to do anything. Mm-hmm. That's not going to budge. So what you do is you start with the loan that you owe the least in. Okay. Which most people start with the one that has the highest interest rate, but that's mm-hmm. a mistake. So let's say out of the 10 loans, you have a loan for $1,000. Okay. That's the smallest one. You attack that one full force first. Okay. So every extra penny that you have, aside from your minimum payment, you send it only to that one. The other ones, you're still paying your minimum. You don't want to stop paying your minimums because that's a big deal. So all your money goes into that one. Okay. And then you'll pay it off way sooner. So then Mm. you completely eliminate one loan. And there's, like, this excitement that you're like, oh, my God, I paid off a whole loan. Like, it's it gets you pumped. Yeah. And then you go to the second one that you owe the least amount in. And you keep working your way up to the one that you owe the most. Mm-hmm. And most people are like, oh, I should pay the one with the highest interest first. No, because it, it's not as motivating. So that's yeah. why I did it. Yeah. I mean, in my case, I did. I wanted to pay it. The sooner, the better. Because How of the interest. How much did you owe when you graduated? I, I remember my last chunk of payment was only like four thousand dollars 
Is that the total that you graduated with? For, in debt? for like, no, no. I was paying before monthly. But like the last so big were, chunk, I saved more from my paycheck. So were you paying monthly while you were in school? Yes. Oh, okay. Most people don't yes. do that. Yes. And then, I, well, I was still, I was working when yeah. I was going to college. So monthly. And then like the last four or 3000 I paid them in bulk. Because okay. I saved more from my paycheck right. to be able to, That's to great. pay for that. So I was like good i honestly don't think i was contributing to my student loan debt while i was in college i think to the ones that had interest yes but not the ones that did not Mm. have interest which were only two um but that's really good if you can which in most cases you can you don't need that coffee you don't need to be popping bottles 300 three hundred dollar bottles while you're (laughs) in college you should be paying that to your student loan um but that that's how i graduated with almost 30,000. Mm, okay. Which is a lot, but it's not considering the school I went to was $30,000 right. a year. Yeah. So, please be smart with student loans. Don't take more than you need. Look for scholarships, go to a community college for your general education and then transfer to a four-year university. When you graduate, your bachelor's degree is going to say that for your college. <laughs> it's not going to say community college. Nobody yeah. will ever know. Yeah. So, I think it's definitely worth it. Yes. Um, any other mistakes that you've made? Uh, well, we have a list here. What else? I would say credit cards. Credit cards is a big yeah. big one because it's very easy to overspend. They have credit cards in Mexico, though. Yeah, but I was young. Yeah. I didn't know about, you know. We don't have credit cards in Cuba. No? Mm-mm. Mm. Score system in Mexico? I think so. Really? Yeah, yeah. Which, by the way, I also think the credit score system is some baloney, phony <laughs> stuff. How is... Here's my issues with it. A, Experian, TransUnion, all of those are privately owned companies. Mm. They're private. Mm. And they're telling you how good you are with your money. Or telling lenders. And then the U.S., for the most part, judges us based on that. We owe trillions of dollars to China. So who are we to tell people? I mean, I know some people are patterns, but yeah. I was always very yeah. careful with credit cards. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know, again, about credit score and how to build it from a younger age. Yeah. But I remember getting my credit card, and one I remember one professor telling me, you know, if you get a credit card, always pay it off. You know, oh. you go to the grocery store, you pay fifty dollars, uh, pay with your credit card, and then once you, once you get home, go and pay it off. Mm-hmm. Don't let it build up, mm-hmm. and that stuck in my mind, and that's well, how I manage my that. credit card, or and it helped my credit. Pay, or you can pay it off at the end of the month and right. still not pay interest. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I actually do the same thing if I like go anywhere. I yeah. try to anyways. I haven't been doing a good job I pay lately. it monthly because yeah. then I forget to yeah. do it right after. You know? I don't want to pay interest. Right. Because yeah. I have the money. I just want to get points. Yeah. <laughs> um, which is, I'll talk, we can talk about that yes. in another episode, points and travel and credit cards. Yes. And I would do, I, I started doing something too to save money. Like if I wanted to get my nails done, which I don't really get them done very often. Mm-hmm. If I wanted to go get my nails done, but then I was like, no, let me save money. And I do them myself at home. Those $25 that I would have spent, I would apply to a credit card okay, or to a loan mm-hmm. because I'm like, in my mind, I was going to spend it. Right. So I might as well take that money, transfer it from my bank into a mm-hmm. debt. And like that helps you. If you save $5 at Starbucks because you made your own coffee, it's still transfer those $5. Yeah. And it's like people don't think little by little makes a difference, but that's how it works. It's yes. not the big purchases. If you really look at your finances, you're like, what the hell did I spend my whole yeah. paycheck on? And it's not like you went out and bought Christian Louboutins. It's the little things yes. that added up. Yes. So, with- like, I like using my debit and credit card because then I can go back and see where I spend my money. Because if I take cash out, I have $200 and then I forget and I don't know what happened to those $200. Yeah. Unless you have so, a big bill. Like, the yeah. trick is if you have a, hun- a big, like, a $100 bill, you don't want to break it for stupid stuff. <laughs> and it makes you save money, doesn't it? Yeah. Don't yeah. have small yeah. bills <laughs> if you're going to do cash. But, yeah, with credit cards and, and credit score. And now I see, you know, on Facebook, um, a lot of people have the... Let me fix your credit yes. stuff. I don't really... 
I know you pay for it and it's actually a service, but you do know that you can do everything they're doing yourself. They're yes. literally sending uh, letters to credit bureaus and stuff. But my thing, I thankfully, thus far, I have a great credit score and mm-hmm. I've maintained it, but I've always been very careful yeah. with payments. And it's like, if I can't afford it, yeah, I it's. Still, I try. I, I'm. I'm lying to myself. I say yeah. I, I don't buy it, but then I find a way to pay for it right away. Yeah. So my mom has a credit card debt that she's had for a long time, and the other day I saw a commercial about like consolidating your credit. No. You're and not. we called, and it's Do such. Not. Bullshit. Do you not you debt. have to pay for them to fix your credit, and it's like I'd rather just pay for the freaking. But they're card. not even fixing your credit. Like, and Dave Ramsey is somebody that I really like. A lot of his principles, not all of them, because Dave Ramsey is good if you just want to be like have an average life and be good and debt free. Mm-hmm. Some debt for me is smart debt, like mortgages and mm-hmm. home loans. That's Those, what Mike tells me, that's but I good still debt. don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> not a good way of thinking in my opinion that i mean let me not say not a good way of thinking that's a, a way of thinking if you just want to live a basic life which there's yeah. nothing wrong with that like yeah. a normal life i i would like to live a little bit more luxurious life mm-hmm. so the rich get rich by using other people's money to make money it's crazy like i was not aware of any thing about investing and like uh income mm-hmm. co- Passive income yeah. until I met Mike. Yeah. And he started talking to me about it. And I was like, whoa, this is a whole new world. <laughs> I've always it's loved It's so money. interesting. I've loved finances and I read constantly and I'm like watching videos all the time. So I've, thankfully, I've been like this from a very young age. So I've learned a lot and I've made a lot of mistakes and mm-hmm. I've, about passive income with like Airbnb. Yeah. Um, although it's not fully passive because you're still doing stuff, but semi-passive. And it's like, I own a few houses. And at first, I wanted to buy my second house. And I was, you know what's really funny? I w- I'm so quick to buy a house, but like it took me like 10 years to buy a car. <laughs> a house, I'm like, yeah, let's go for it. Uh-huh. Um, and a car, I'm not. I don't know why. But I usually, like, when I walk in a house, I get a feeling. I don't know why. Okay. I'm like, yes, no. But for me, I was... Real estate, that total a different topic, but real estate for me is the way to grow your mm-hmm. money. Because right now, I'm having people paying off my debt yes so whenever i'm ready to sell the houses like that's gonna be yeah right now it's a lot of work (laughs) i know i I just think it's very interesting that you don't learn this in school no it's not beneficial for them to teach you yeah because it it, i don't know i was just like blown away yeah it benefits honestly and this isn't like oh some i'm like some crazy the, what is it called? Conspiracy theory. It's like it really does benefit big corporations yes. and the government to keep people just like, okay, I'm going to be an employee. I'm going to keep working. I'm going to keep yeah. just spinning the wheel. But for me, the most important thing is financial freedom. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily being rich, but being free enough to dictate what I want to do with my time. Granted, you're going to do things you don't want to because that's just life, but that's mm-hmm. that's what's most important to me, and yeah. that's money gets you there. Yeah. You've been looking for a house. I've been, but, you know, like, I feel like everything's so expensive right now, even Tampa's with COVID. Crazy. Tampa, it's expensive. It's, it's gotten so expensive so. with all the new developments yeah. and stuff. But I used... Like a lot of my savings, because you, another thing they don't teach you, when you buy a house, you have a down payment. Yeah. You have closing costs. Yeah. Which your down payment can be anywhere from zero, very, very rare to find now. Um, it's usually like three point five percent to like twenty percent. Mm-hmm. So three point five percent is if you get a an FHA loan, which is a loan that's backed up by the government. Mm-hmm. Did you know that? Is it like the first home buyer, or that's no different? Uh, federal loan, yeah, that was that's like a first time home buyer program. Okay. The FHA is the type of loan the government gives people at a lower interest rate, usually to get you into the first house. So okay. usually, if you have multiple houses, you can you only have it. one. Uh. 
And then conventional loan is a regular loan. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about real estate in another one because there's so much to that. But for me, I learned and I made so many mistakes with real estate stuff because I didn't have anybody teaching me. My parents had no idea. Yeah, I mean, I feel like another topic, another reason is like overspending. It's very Uh, easy to overspend. And it's very tempting when for example you get a raise and then you start making more money then you start spending more money and that's not gonna help you to save no and to have a backup for any emergencies or invest to be able to have some other income you know yeah like we were talking about most people don't have a a thousand dollar emergency fund Mm -hmm. to if there's an emergency they don't have a thousand dollars that they could like that would make or break them and they live paycheck to paycheck, which I really feel it, it sucks. Like, yeah. my parents are like that. But I think when you come to this country young, <clears throat> there's no excuse. Yes. Uh, granted, there are a lot of circumstances that happen that really set you back that I may not understand because I'm not in family stuff, but there's really no excuse. Like, you can go through hard phases, but you don't have to stay there. Yes. Like, you can work your butt off. You know what the problem is? We have champagne taste on beer budgets. Yeah, you mentioned that, and I think it's so true. Yeah. It is very true. Popping it... bottles. $300 bottle <laughs> at the club. That $300 can go towards a principal payment, and you yeah. can be out of debt, and you can pay off your car sooner. Yes. It's how Mike says, make your money work for you. Yeah. No, you have right? That's how the rich are. <laughs> yeah. Like, and then that's. That's good debt, and I had to be okay with it, because I'm like, I'm like, oh, I don't yeah. want debt. So, like, there's something called PMI, mm-hmm. or MPI, which is another thing that I had no idea about. I've Most, never heard of it, so tell me about so it. So, it's with houses. So, basically, listen to this bullshit. <laughs> um, More bullshit. Basically, the bank makes, let's say you buy a house. Okay. The bank makes you pay an insurance... For th- to protect them in case you don't pay your loan. What? And you have to pay for it monthly. It's called PMI or MPI. So if you default on your loan, this insurance saves the bank from but I'm you funding defaulting it. it. But you have to pay for it. And you don't have a choice. Wow. You have to. So for my house that I live in, it was $200 a month. Wow. That's a big chunk. Yeah. <laughs> so... And escrow is, so an escrow is where all of your payments, like your uh, loan, your insurance, home insurance, Mm -hmm. your um, taxes, and your PMI if you have it. So in that, and I was like, what's this PMI and PI? $200? That's a lot of money a month. (laughs) And then I realized, I was like, that's some bullshit. I have to pay to protect you from me. A push and feed. (laughs) Yeah. And oh, I was wow. like, how do I get rid of this? Can I get rid of this? And I found out, and you have to find out if you have a house loan, if you can. No, you can't remove them for new loans. Huh. But I had to pay, be paying the house for five years and be at 80% equity. Wow. Which is a whole other thing if I explain what equity is. Yes. But, so I was like, okay, equity. So basically, I had to owe 80% of uh-huh. the whole loan, like at least, okay. like 20% of my loan had to be paid off, uh-huh. and I was like, damn, that's a lot of money, so I sat and calculated, I was like, nope, I'm gonna do this, and I was like, okay, paid off my student loans, next, this, and air, every Airbnb, every dollar, every work that I did on the side would literally just pump it, and I got it removed, and now I have $200 free a month, yeah, well, wow, free, cause I but that's, something, that's something that you saw that you didn't understand, and then you... Look for the information, and then you were able to yeah. get rid of it. And most people don't know if you've had it for a long time. Some... Most people don't pay attention to what their bills are, yeah. you know? They're like, okay, it's Not me, 500. Like, magnifying glass. Yeah, but I, I like to check, like, yeah. okay, what am I getting charged I for? Know. You gotta be careful. Some fall off on their own, but you have to request it. The mm-hmm. bank doesn't want you to remove it. You have to call them and be like, hey, I want to request. I'm at 80%. It's been five years, or whatever the terms are for your loan. Yeah. And I was like, just yes. when it fell off. Like, that's a big chunk of money. Yes. And that $200 can go to something else. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it's like, how are you supposed to know that? Yes. 
it's Nobody stuff that you that. you realize by making mistakes yep. and by going online now everything yep. is online you can yeah. go and find out information about everything There's and no i think it's very important mm -hmm. to know to have this knowledge so you can advance and improve and like you know yeah. if not you're just gonna be like stuck in knowledge is thing. power yeah. and knowledge is money actually I think I had first heard of, about it because I actually took a real estate course. I don't know if I told you. Yes. I took the full course um, six years ago just because I wanted to learn. I had no intention of being a real estate agent. I knew I wanted to buy properties in the future, and I had the worst real estate agent when I bought my first house <laughs> ever. She was horrible. So I was like, no, I want to learn the ins and outs. So I took the whole real yeah. estate course. Like, I took the exam. I passed it. And mm -hmm. everybody's like, oh, you gave me an agent. I'm like, no, I literally just did this for my knowledge. And it's like stuff like that. Like, I learned so much, yeah. so many mistakes that my real estate agent, first one, not the one yeah. that I bought the other houses with because she's amazing. Like, so many mistakes. And I'm like, damn it. Yeah. If I would have known this, like... Mm -hmm. So it's like, again, knowledge is power, and stop spending yeah. money on stupid stuff. Yes. You don't need 80% of the things you Don't spend what don't. you don't have. I think that's key. Invest your money. Be smart with your money. Yes. And you won't be able to, you won't have to struggle your whole life for money. And like you said, YouTube, like I watch YouTube videos about money. Yeah. And like finances and all of that oh my god like every day all day yeah hey, have you heard about the fire movement no okay so it stands for financially independent retire early okay F -I -R -E. and it's this movement it's a lot of people our age young people that are like i don't want to live like my grandparents lived like my parents lived just in debt and like paycheck to paycheck yeah. And basically, it's they're doing extreme stuff, cutting their living costs. Like, mm -hmm. if you have a three-bedroom house, get roommates, even if you don't want to have roommates. Yeah. So you can pay off your house. So basically, they're doing everything they can. They're down downsizing, living in tiny homes. Mm -hmm. And so they can, like, quit the job that they hate and actually live a life that they want to live. So it's basically, like, wow. doing everything you can for a few years. Yeah. And I always say, or there's this quote, it's like live now like most people won't so later you can live like most people can't yes um i i mean um but i've made a lot of mistakes and i'm still yes i think it's part of in my opinion uh when i grew up it was like okay go to college study and get a good job and work hard and that's it you yeah. work hard your whole life and then what if you get fired you know you you don't have well, an income one. and you're living paycheck by paycheck and that's the thing it's maybe like culture maybe my mom was not aware and she was like oh you need to work for a good company that's yeah. very common that's all they knew yeah and that's then you don't know about this whole another spectrum that you could take advantage of. Be an entrepreneur. Of. Yeah. And then my parents didn't really know that because in Cuba there's no good company you can work <laughs> for. It's all the government. Yeah, it's, yeah, like work hard and make money and that's it. And then what? There's so much more to life than that. Yeah, and then what? And that's why I was like, no, I don't want to live like that. Like if I, if you enjoy your corporate job, then fantastic, <laughs> but you have to enjoy it. I liked what I did. I hated my boss. She was the worst person ever. Mm. I mean, horrible, horrible, horrible. Um, but it's like there's, it's just like the spending, like little things. Like my biggest, biggest spending is food. Yeah. And I know it's everybody's. <laughs> I spent so much money going out. Yeah. And then I had made, like, some rules for Jose and I. We both agreed on that I actually fell back and I need to go back on it. Mm hmm When we go out, we don't both get an appetizer. Mm hmm We either, if I get an appetizer, he gets an entree and we share it. Mm -hmm. And then I had, we had created a rule, which we fell back from, <laughs> but we have to jump back on again. It, it happens. Yes. We're human. Where when we go out to eat, we don't spend more than $40 on a bill. Okay. Like, $20 each, including drinks, including everything, like $40. Mm -hmm. I love crab legs. Crab legs are expensive. That's <laughs> usually my weakness, and we've spent way more than that. But we need to, like, when we were doing that, we were, like, good. And then 
You'll be fine. Yeah, like, you just try to balance. Yeah, you know, don't you're overspend. Good at that too, yeah. When so, we go out to eat. Yeah. I I look I at mean, money. At first, mm, I couldn't share any food with Mike because he eats <laughs> a, lot. a lot. You know, so I was like, all right, I'll get my own thing. And I like food as well. So, yeah. but now the thing that we've been doing, it's okay. Maybe we share like four appetizers and that's what mm -hmm. we do for dinner. Or like you guys do, we share an appetizer and then we get yeah. like a meal and we split it. Yeah. And it's saving money and it's not making us gain weight. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's hard because we love food. And you another know? thing is we don't ever order alcohol really when we uh -huh. go out. I mean... Sometimes we do. It depends on when, I like agree. the occasion sometimes. Yeah. Or if we go to like a, to watch a football game, we get beers. If it's a game, he'll yeah. get like beers and stuff. It's not that expensive. But I know people that every single time no. they go out to dinner, they have to have cocktails. And it's not just one. It'll be two, three. <laughs> and it's like those cocktails right there are like $30. Yes. It, Alcohol is more expensive too yeah. sometimes than your food. $10 is like a cheap one. Yeah. Because it's usually like 15 for yes. a glass or... And I'm like, no. And then Jose doesn't like to drink that much, and I can't drink now because I'm pregnant. But even before I was pregnant, I'm not a big drinker. Yeah. So it's very rare that I would order a glass of wine. Um, but that's a big thing that you can do. Another thing yeah. you do to save money is you cook at home. You have, like, a yes. schedule. What's your yes. schedule? So Monday through Thursday, I cook at home. Every we meal? Every meal. Uh, lunch, well, breakfast, we don't eat breakfast because of the fasting. But lunch and dinner, it's at home. And then Fridays, we go out. Saturdays, I eat at home, and Mike does the big brothers, big sisters, yep. so he spends the time with the kid. And, and he eats out? And he eats out with with him, with okay. the kid. But I eat home. Okay. And for lunch and dinner? Yes, yes. Sometimes I go with him for dinner, but okay. I try to stay home and make my own dinner mm -hmm. and then Sundays it depends sometimes we make burgers at home or if we want to go to a different place we go out okay but we try to keep that Monday through Thursday that is great keep it at home you know I, I need make to do that. yeah I'm trying to get better at it and before because of work sometimes I was like oh, I don't want to get home and like cook you know and we would go out yeah. but now it's usually like I'm keeping it that way and you save <laughs> so, so much money yes don't you? Have yes. you seen a difference? Yes, I mean, it's... <sighs> For me, when you go it out, is difficult. When you, like, the, the, let's say you buy a package of chicken, that's uh, a meal at a restaurant where when you buy it, you can make three it's meals yeah. so that's how it saves you it's money it's laziness yeah. honestly and for me although i do have to say since we have the airbnbs we literally live like gypsies sometimes we're like at different houses all the time mm. so it gets really difficult to buy groceries because like if i buy groceries for this amount of days and i have guests checking in like i'm like oh it's like it's too much it's it's too difficult to buy exact ingredients. And even when I'm like, okay, I'll grocery shop and we'll eat here this week. Then yeah. we get a random request. And I'm like, oof. Yeah. So so what I do I is I, 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 before I go to the grocery store, I already know what I'm making for dinner. A meal plan. I have a meal plan and I know what ingredients I need and I know what ingredients I already have. And that's why I go and buy for the week. Yeah. So What's it's, your grocery budget a week, would you say? I would say no more than 200 a week? A week. That's a lot. Yeah. I, w I usually pay... It depends. If I buy, like, a lot of meat and stuff, because that's the most expensive stuff. $800 is a lot of money for two people. I pay around one... I mean, 170 120 usually a week, because I go to Publix. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. It's convenience. I could go somewhere else, but I it's farther Aldi. away. Yeah, but so, that farther away saves you so much money. I, I love know. Aldi. Like Aldi is amazing. Those people that don't like it, don't I would go to it, Aldi. Right? I would go to Walmart. But again, it is convenience in this case. Publix is the closest. But it's not, it's not that hard to drive a little bit farther. But it's time. Yeah, but now you have time. But I do it on Saturdays. You're good. I have to clean. I have excuses. to go. <laughs> you can do it. I just like Publix. Oh, you that's know, okay. it's so it's so it's, it's that's okay. It's shopping. It's a pleasure there. <laughs> that's okay if you like. And it, then but Walmart that's is like it's always packed. And then uh, depends when you go. If you go on a Monday or Tuesday, it's not that bad. In I the go morning. on Saturdays. Okay. I do grocery. I mean, that's crazy. 
Yeah. But for me, I've been trying to cook at home <laughs> a lot more because you save seriously so much yeah. money. I'm going to try your plan. I'm going to do Monday through Thursday. Mm. <laughs> and it doesn't have to be, uh, like, time-consuming stuff. Like, yeah, I made, like, grilled chicken and rice. It yeah. doesn't take a lot. I'm sometimes so I... bougie. Sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't want to eat that. <laughs> and then I'll be like, oh, I'm craving this. Yeah, and that, that cravings is. are dangerous. Not even pregnancy yeah. cravings. I had more cravings not pregnant than pregnant, actually. Yeah. Like Kona Grill. Mm. Sushi. Ooh, I want that right now. <laughs> Maybe I'll get that. No. <laughs> Cook Gisenia today. Um, <laughs> I know. It's yeah. Friday Eve, but I know. those are a little bit of our <laughs> tips. Actually, a lot of it about not just tips, mistakes that we've made. We hope you guys can relate to us, learn from us. Um, and let us know what else you want us to talk about. Yeah. Okay. Bye. See you next Tuesday. In a Bye. Good night. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>